Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful, sunny Mother's Day. We've got some things happening in this congregation. Today was the last day of Sunday school, and they celebrated, and I'm excited for that. I took pictures, and I will share those all later. This Tuesday night, May 14th, Animosis Baccalaureate will be held at the school um, after the awards ceremony. Baccalaureate at 7 p.m. I have the honor of uh, partaking in a little bit of that service. Let's see what else is happening. Memorial Day, May 27th, the church office will be closed. Oh, I drove by the church the other day. Usually I go that way and I don't come this way, and I notice some beautiful pots outside. Um, I don't know if you all noticed them when you got here, but I just found out just now the flowers and the pots out in the front of the church were donated by the Curtis family in memory of Mary's mom, Nancy Land Frankie. Special thank you goes to Jenny Beck and Jeremiah Sigler of Sigler Farms. Yes, Jenny. And Connie Buck did, did the first. Oh, wonderful. I'd say thank you to Connie, but I think she's still celebrating with the kids outside, which is wonderful. There is an envelope in your bulletin today uh, for strengthening the church offering. The Strengthen the Church offering supports the expansion of ministry and growth of the UCC to local of UCC local congregations. Your support of this offering will help the UCC fulfill its commitment to creating a just world for all by investing in new ministries and practices that meet the emerging needs of local communities. I think that is a wonderful uh, thing that we do. I'm also just learning about that myself. There's something called Five for Five, and I don't know exactly what that is, um, but I'm excited that it's something that the UCC um, lifts up and for our local congregations and beyond. So, are there any other announcements or anything that anyone would like me to lift up this morning? Oh, one that I forgot, but I'm going to let Bill share that. Uh, just a reminder that uh, I have uh, tomato plants out on the east side after church. So anybody that wants to add some to their garden, you're welcome. There was also some other plants out there, right? Right. Cucumbers maybe. I can't remember what I saw, but um, he's put a lot of hard work into that. And what a beautiful gift to offer it to these people. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else we need to lift up today? It's a beautiful day to be alive. It is a beautiful day to be alive. Amen. <laughs> Great. Um, Sunday, June 2nd, I will um, we'll be having my installation here. I think that's in the bulletin as well, right? Um, I would love to see as many of you that are able to come on that day. I know it gets busy in June, uh, but it will be a wonderful, wonderful time. There will be treats afterwards. That's all we're Jack here. And there were some birthdays. I know we sang happy birthday to some of these people last week, and so maybe we shouldn't sing again, but I'd like to lift up. Ross and Susie both had birthdays in the last couple days. Is there anyone else? Bill turned 30 this year. <laughs> Ty, yep. Yeah. Did we sing happy birthday to Bill? I don't think we did. Let's do it. Can we do it? I think so. saving love to us all. We give God all our praises. 
Let our hearts be filled with joyful celebration for the fulfillment of God's promises. We open our hearts to receive the joy of Christ. Let us move forward with Jesus Christ as our guiding light. The light of Jesus Christ is shining in Jesus. Come, let us worship our risen Christ, whose love and light guide us still. Let us join together to sing hymn number 319, Blessed Assurance, found on page 319 of your hymnal.
loving God. In Christ, we see the fulfillment of your promise to be with us always. Forgive us when we lose faith in your compassion for all creation. Help us to see the great sacrifice of the risen Christ as an example of your undying love for us all. Strengthen us to do better and to become better together in our relationship with you and with all of creation. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you all. You didn't even hear the music and you came over. That's awesome. when I got there. We had we eating breakfast. Yep. And then what? You had Fruit Loops? And then we played a game. With Fruit Loops. And was it fun? Yeah. Yeah. How about can you three pick out one thing that you really liked about Sunday School this year and tell us? Can you think of one thing? What was your favorite thing? Halloween. Oh, nice. Good. Okay, well, maybe the, you got something? Nope. Okay. Can I say something? And I haven't even been here all year, but I saw you guys do something really cool last week. That was cool. Was that your favorite thing to go to Dollar General? Yeah. And buy stuff for people? Um, so I have something else that I'd like you guys all to do because I know you're generous people. Are you ready? Today is a special day. Do you know what day that is? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, right? And so you see what we got there? Well, with only three of you, unless we can talk somebody else into helping, I'm talking to you. We've got some gifts for our mothers. We have more than one gift today, but, um, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit just for a second, and maybe this isn't necessarily the greatest time during the children's message, um, but I want to talk about Mother's Day. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, so when I was a kid, we went to the timber. We had this great timber, and we would look for mushrooms, and we would do all these things. There was all kinds of food, and it was great, and my mom was there, and my grandma, and all my aunts, and it was wonderful, and we celebrated those people, and now those people are in heaven, and that makes me a little bit sad, right? Yeah. Do you guys know somebody in heaven? Do you? Yeah? Yeah? So I bet the people out here do as well. Maybe their moms or their grandmas or some aunts or some people they love, their spouses, those types of things. And that makes a day that we celebrate, a day that we get excited, a little bit difficult for some people. So in a moment, we're going to have some joy about Mother's Day. We're going to share some gifts, and it's going to be awesome. But before that, would it be okay if I pray? Yeah. Is that okay with you guys? All right. God of all creation, pour out your blessing on all mothers, expectant mothers, and those who provide motherly care. Bless them with a heart like your heart, loving and kind, comforting and strong, nurturing and full of grace. But Lord, we ask you to console all who long to be mothers. 
anyone grieving the death of a mother and mothers who have lost a child. Support all whom for this day is difficult and warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on this Mother's Day. Amen. I wish, I wish that video would take a picture of these guys. I need to have you sit here because they were all up here folded with their hands folded and their eyes closed. And it was just absolutely beautiful. Somebody has taught you well to pray. Good job. Okay, so now we're going to celebrate. Oh, and guess what else? There's cake. Do you guys love cake? Yeah. No? Yeah. Oh my gosh, save my, save your frosting for me. Okay, so there is cake that we're going to get to celebrate. We're going to have another special gift in just a The pastor said a little bit earlier, uh, although this is a very joyous day, there are probably a lot of people in this room, uh, including myself, who uh, are missing their mothers on Mother's Day. And this is an old country song that I've known for a long time and like. It's called, If I Can Only Hear My Mother Pray Again. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. 
Sanctify them in truth, your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Here ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. May the Holy Spirit lead us where it will.
And so Jesus prays to God with his disciples listening. And I think that was intentional, right? He prays this. I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Jesus prays especially about the world. There are many joys in this world. And I do believe Jesus prays for that as well. But that's not what Jesus is praying about here. And when we're talking about the concept of the world, because it's mentioned over and over again, it's not referring to God's creation of what we see as the world. What Jesus is referring to is what's outside of this space. Right? The world. The world's dangers, temptations, and the culture of the world are different than what we get when we come in here on a Sunday morning. The world is a hard place to be for all of us, but Jesus doesn't place any blame for that. We blame other people when things in our lives don't go right. Kids, friends, schools, employers, churches. It is a hard place to be. It's clear, though, that Jesus doesn't hate the word, world or want to destroy it. Remember John 3.16? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we may not perish but have eternal life, right? God created the world, but somehow it got horribly off track. So God came into the world as Jesus to show us love, to show another way. To redeem the world. Now, just a few sentences before this gospel text, Jesus says, Take courage. I have conquered the world. By dying and rising again to give life to the world, he's shown that the powers of the world, all of this out here, outside of these doors, are nothing. They won't have the last word. By his death on the cross, he's shown the cruelty of the world. He's conquered the world, but not to destroy it. He's conquered the world in order to give the world, and you, and me, new life. So if mom or dad says to their child, be sure to call us if you need anything, we'll be there. Jesus says, all mine are yours, and all yours are mine. May they be as one as we are one. Through this prayer, Jesus is affirming that even though he won't be there in person, God and the apostles will still always be intimately connected. God will still reveal God's word to them. And they'll have their belief and faith that guides and motivates them. They will have a sense of belonging, a relationship with God that will sustain them. Doesn't this Sound like the way we may send up our kids to whatever part of the journey is next for them? The world is full of division, hurt, greed. The world tempts us to value money and possessions and all of those things. And the world tempts us to just think of ourselves. That's the culture we live in when we go out into the world. But that is not the culture that we have in our hearts. That's not who we are. And that, my gosh, is not how Jesus raised us. Jesus is asking that we would remain true to our values and identity as citizens of the kingdom of God. The values of forgiveness, generosity, love, truth-telling, and standing up for the poor, the forgotten, and the ones who are grieving. Mom says, have fun, Jesus says. I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. Now that's a little bit more than the mom's simple have fun, right? Fun is a momentary fleeting feeling, but joy is something so much deeper. A more lasting contentment, not based on outside worldly influences. Jesus says, in a little while, we won't see each other, but I encourage you all to stay connected. Act on your values. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are, and be joyful. So, the image I have in my mind right now is all of us coming together in this space every Sunday morning. 
like the college student, bringing their laundry in to be cleaned and folded and all of that. We come together to speak our native language of forgiveness, generosity, and love to be strengthened against the temptations of this world, to stay connected with God and our family and our faith family, to experience joy, and to be quick, equipped to go back out into the world. Amen. Today's anthem is dedicated to all mothers, and we are pleased to uh, feature soloist uh, Hannah Shelton, and we love it when she comes home and shares her talent with us.
congregation. Um, Mother's Day is hard, right? Lori, I'm glad that we could all share your Mother's Day gift. Um, Hannah, thank you very, very much. Your voice, everybody kept telling you, your voice is beautiful, right? <laughs> they were not wrong. Um, and today, we also get to celebrate a big achievement for you, right? You, you want to share? Is that okay? Do you feel good about that? You sang in front of us all. How about come up here for just a moment? Oh, there you just got a microphone. Yes. I graduated with my master's degree on Thursday. <laughs> now I gotta find a job. <laughs> uh, we stand in celebration with you. Thank you so much for being here this day. Loretta. I would like to thank the deacons for the beautiful card they sent. Yes. Deacons, thank you. Thank you. I can't hear you. Yeah, let's let's lift up all of our joys and concerns. Here we are. Well, I have a concern. Um, my brother Pete was taken to the hospital and he has congestive heart failure. Uh, he had to wait several hours to, for them to find a hospital in between Davenport and Des Moines. The hospitals are full, but he's at St. Luke's right now. He'll be there for a couple of days yet, at least. We'll be praying for Pete. Anybody else have any joys and concerns? Mars, oh, behind us. Ross will run right to you. Oh. Oh, Ross up here. Well, he did it again. Our awesome grandson, Anthony, not only beat the school record in discus two weeks ago, he beat his own record this week. Wow. wow. Grandma and Grandpa, I'm sure. Anybody else? Do we have any other joys and concerns to lift up this day? Well, friends, let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Today we pray especially for Tim and Jody, Ted and Tony, Belita and Amy, we pray for Harvey and Michael, Sarah and Jackie, for Dale and Carl, for Eva and Dan, for Rosella and Herb, for Nick, Don, and Phil. We pray for Bill and Betty, Loretta, and today we also lift up Pastor Rodney Blummel and Pastor Frank Shepherd. We ask that the Lord, be with them as they struggle through some medical issues. We pray for those affected by natural disasters, for those affected by violence. We pray for our partners in ministry, Saints Peter and Paul Lutheran Church. We pray for the Ukraine, Israeli, and Palestinian people, and for the well-being of our country and our world. We lift up Marlene and Shirley, Bev and Mona and Jeanette, and we pray for those who are serving in the armed services. Kelsey, Ian, Matt, Rose, Madison, and Utana. Knowing that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One more thing I wanted to lift up. I think I forgot the people that I, we, we wanted to pray for Pete, and I know that you'll all add Pete to your prayers and give thanks for Anthony, but I think one more time, it is appropriate that we lift up those among us who are graduating or have just recently graduated. Amen. Will you pray with me the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us? Our Father, 
Please join me in singing our closing hymn for the day, Freely Freely, page 517.
God surround you everywhere you go. Amen. Amen.